I may need to put better support behind it. <laughs> Just notice it's like. So today we're going to be starting off in acrylics. I'm going to do what's called a mixed media painting. I've done a couple of these with you guys before in the past, not super recently. There we go. I'm going to squirt a little more water here. I, I put these paints out and then kind of waited a little bit. So that's why they're slightly drier than they should be, but that's okay. As long as they don't fully dry. <laughs> now this is, um, I, forgot the dimensions. This is kind of a wacky size, but I will put them on the screen right now so you know the dimensions of this painting. Um, again, we're gonna paint it just the base tones in acrylic and I'm gonna just finish it out in oil. I'm gonna probably do about 75% of this in acrylic if I had to guess, but I really don't know because I haven't gotten into it yet. We're gonna be doing a tropical kind of, just a tropical forest, not, not like an evergreen forest, but something maybe with palm trees or I don't know, just, Maybe something you could see in a warm area, you know, somewhere where it gets a lot of rain. That'll be kind of interesting and a little different for us. I think that'll be kind of nice, but it's a lot of ground to cover. <laughs> a lot of this will just kind of be mist showing through. You know, we usually paint acrylics on small canvases. This is a big one, but it's just really, no, oh, sorry about it, tilting. I may need to put a better support behind it. <laughs> Just notice it was like, yeah, we don't need that. So now I've got kind of a soft green. It's very similar to the, to the gray of the palette. Very soft. Just got a slight green cast to it. And yes, I am painting backwards. Um, usually I'm on the left. I'm on the right here today because I don't have any room. <laughs> I'm kind of in a weird spot. I'm, no, I'm not kind of. I'm very, very much in a weird spot. We're going to make the best of it because, because it's all we can do, right? There, look at that. So the only thing is I just need to, I need to remember to show you my palette. And I also need to remember to not make a mess with it. <laughs> yes. Now we're going to have just hundreds and hundreds of trees back here. I'm just indicating a few just with a large brush. We can maybe scrub some, scrub some color right here as well just just in preparation for kind of just the background i'm gonna set my palette down i've got a mr bottle here there we go there just kind of wrapping up this little section and in doing that i noticed that i really could use i really could use more of this this gray kind of almost all throughout, maybe not fully all, all throughout, but uh, pretty close to all throughout. Okay, yeah, that's enough rambling. Let me get the color. Again, just kind of come back to the same old stuff, but I think this is just one of those things that's gonna start kind of rough, just due to, well, due to just the subject, I guess, just kind of the mushiness of the background. It just requires this. There. Well, we're still continuing here to make progress. It's actually starting. I just just looked back about six feet away, which is very important. It looks like we're making progress. This is good because let's face it, five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't look so good. Not that it looks good now, but at least we can kind of maybe see some light. I wouldn't say at the end of the tunnel, but maybe some light halfway through the tunnel. I'm painting mostly with water. And in fact, you can, well, you can't see it because <laughs> this is such a long canvas that I can't show you the whole thing at once right now. I may bring it to my living room. I may take it out of the studio uh, and bring it to my living room. And maybe we'll mess around with it with the details so you can see the whole thing. But for now, just you kind of get a half view. That's only half the canvas. It'll be fine <laughs> there. So now I'm going to mix together here just a soft, kind of a soft green. I'm just going to underpaint a little water there. I'm just going to underpaint my sections of land. You know, that's all there is to it. I'll just get it covered with paint. Actually, it may take a couple of layers. I've got this acrylic watered down more than normal today, for sure. Here's my palette. More than normal because it, it just helps it spread. I don't want to be here for ever working on just the underpainting phase. And I just don't think that it matters, honestly, because we're going to be doing so many steps. This is you know, each step is going to be kind of buried underneath the next step. Nothing has to be perfect. And we don't even have to 
start dialing it in until the very end, honestly. So let's go ahead and get it nice and thick right here. Dark, dark, dark. There, that's good. It may take a couple of coats. That is no big deal. Just a matter of kind of establishing some of my darks, but just like any other painting you would ever do, you know, build some. I guess those little spots are okay. They could be rocks or just different, different things happening. Build your depth here in the underpainting phase. This is most important. If you don't do it, you're going to have a harder time. Not impossible, but just, you know, it'll be a harder time trying to make the highlight look beautiful. You know, it'll take you a lot more effort. And so that really is one of my biggest tips, I would say, when you are underpainting. Set yourself up for success. So now I'm going back up here to the top. And you know what? I really ought to get a paper towel or <laughs> a shop towel. There we go. This is a paper towel because it happened to be convenient. I'm going to lay. Now this is fully, fully, fully dry. It's been a while. That's important. So we're going to go ahead and lay that paint down. I'm going to get my Mr. Bottle. I'm just going to squirt the paper towel. And I'm going to use, this is damp, this is not wet, this is just damp, and I'm going to very, very lightly just rub it. If you rub down hard, you will go right through that paint. It's not really cured or very strong at this point. There, there we go. We're just going to create a little bit of fog. and It'll help to kind of keep things wet that way. Now, you probably don't want to go overboard. I'm certainly not going to because I'm going to do this in oils. <laughs> I'm just doing the beginning stages of my fog is all. Oh, there we go. That's better. See, that, that makes a difference. So I needed more water. See, there's not enough water there. Should be okay, but I could still... Still go ahead and... There we go. Hit that edge. Excellent. Now, I do want to show you something. Is that green? <laughs> that is green from the background because this background's not fully cured yet. So we got to be very delicate. But it looks decent, doesn't it? Now I've got my number six flat brush. I'm going to just paint in some more... Some more trees. <laughs> That's what this painting is. A bunch of trees. But here is, if you can see that, here is my color. Just kind of a, a brown, honestly. Kind of a nothing special brown, but it works. It totally works for this particular area. So that's all we need. In fact, I see there's a lot of blue in that brown. That's all right, too. I am very happy to have many, many different colors. I think color is just one of the most important parts of, of a painting, honestly. Don't you think so? It just makes a big difference. Now I'm going to add a little bit of our, a little bit of water. You could add foundation medium and maybe a little bit of both would be the best thing, but I'm just going to try to get this to flow. It's nice to, at least in my mind, it's nice to go ahead and get as much. I like these long handles. I can dip way down <laughs> to get my water. Um, what I was going to say was, what was I going to say? <laughs> I th oh, it was, it's nice to go ahead and get as much done here in acrylic as possible because the acrylics won't blend, of course, when they're dry. They'll be, they'll be good to go. They'll dry very quickly. And then we can add our details and our blending with our oils and we won't have to worry about mixing mud, which is fine. I mean, you know, it's just not that big of a deal. You could certainly do this entirely in acrylics or entirely in oil. However, I just thought that the sun rays and the mist, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm right, <laughs> would be easier in, um, in oil. I'm going to allow this background to dry, and then I'm going to use glazing with oils to get a really soft background. But then I'll have detail showing through there because my underpainting is dry, and I'll be able to see all the crisp details that I put into these background trees. So we'll probably do the background trees completely in acrylic. That would be a good idea. But it's fun to be able to use both mediums, oils and acrylics, you know, be able to use their advantages and not their disadvantages. That's kind of cool. So don't be afraid to experiment. Just remember, <laughs> it is oil over acrylic, not the other way around. So now I'm just adding in like these little vines here. <laughs> nothing, nothing too extreme. Just a few. Let's see right here, maybe. Good stuff. Hmm. I like that. All right. Well, you get the idea. That's kind of kind of fun, though. I, I like the way that looks. Let me set that brush to the side. Let me grab my palette. I'm going to be just well. Some of my colors are dry. <laughs> I got some some yellow and green here, so that's what I'm going to be using. 
Let's see what this, uh, or yellow and green, yellow and black. <laughs> yes, I do know my colors. I should know my colors. <laughs> uh, all right, we're gonna go right in this area. And I'm going, ooh, that yellow blob is not great, but it'll be okay, it'll all muddle together. I'm gonna go ahead and begin working in just honestly some background texture. Honestly, this bush here needs a lot of help. <laughs> needs a lot of help. But now that the first coat is dry, come in here and just work it a little bit. Okay. But I'm more interested, honestly, more interested in what's going on kind of back here. There we go. Not too, I think this is maybe a little too sharp, so I'm going to soften it just a bit with my brush here just by scrubbing. Excellent. Now this brush does not work so well when you get too much water in it, so you may need to dry it from time to time. So now I'm going to begin the highlight phase. There's going to be a lot of beautiful sunlight in this painting. You can't really tell now, but that is the plan. I want a lot of sunlight. It's going to be so pretty. There we go. It's so important to get this highlight done in acrylic because then you can fade your beautiful uh, light through here and then you can highlight again. It's gonna be so interesting. It's gonna be so, I don't know, just there's gonna be a lot going on. I think that it's gonna work out. My lighting, of course, is coming from the top down, kind of from right, right to left, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes hard to say. There. Okay. You can afford to be, I think, maybe just the tiniest bit sloppy, but not too sloppy. Good, it's probably sloppy enough. This right here needs some help. Good, yeah, wow. Each tree does not need to connect perfectly at all. It's just not gonna matter. That's too bright, I'll fix that later maybe. This is behind, but again, doesn't really matter. Mm, good stuff, some beautiful. Highlights coming down from the canopy. There's lower trees. You know, it's just full of trees. Beautiful. <laughs> and it's okay to have fun and get excited. This is a challenge. Subjects, not hard. This is not a hard subject. But the just the size and the weird proportions is a bit of a challenge. Not a bad thing. Just, just saying that it is a challenge for me at least. Maybe it's not so much for you guys. Depends on what you're used to, right? Cool, <laughs> that's fun. But it's okay to have a challenge. I'm not really set up for this though. It's kind of a wacky spot to paint. Hopefully, hopefully you already, or hopefully you are enjoying it. There, just some good hits of color. Mm. I will say, I'm spoiled. <laughs> I've, been, I've got, a nice setup that I've been, well, I mean, nice, it's nothing special, but I've got a setup that I know and I've been using for years. And so when you go to change, oh, it's like nothing's where it needs to be. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. Look at that. Just with a few moments of talking to you, starting to get something that I really like. I'm going to take just a few moments here to kind of create some tropical plants. Again, just the number six brush is really all it takes. A few shots of highlight and then some mid-tone. And all of a sudden, you get something that, against that darkness, honestly, you get something that looks pretty good. I don't know how many, I really don't want to do too many of the, this one's pretty short, but I'm okay with that. Since some trees, you know, they have to start short before they get tall, so I'm okay with that. Uh, but I don't want to, like, do palm leaves. It's easy to do those palm fronds all the way down to the ground. Not a good idea. We need to change up the vegetation. So that's what I'm doing right here. A little more highlight there. I think color is going to be your friend when you go to do something like this. The more color variations and opportunities just for different stuff, the better. Brush strokes being the next most important thing that you want to you want to change your brush strokes a lot. My palette sitting on the table there, but here's what I'm doing. I'm just grabbing a little mud right there. Set that down without making a mess. Rather than doing the palm frond thing, let's do something else. Let's start here at the bottom. And let's just do something like pull up, pull up uh, big, broad leaves there. Oh yeah. Even like double up your stroke if you want to make something. Oh yeah. That's, that's the secret right there. Mm. That's cool. Maybe a, a touch of highlight just to 
showcase, you know, some of the dimension on those. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. So you can be as loose or as tight with this as you really would like to be. I'm going to land somewhere in the middle. Not too tight, not too loose. It's the hope at least, right? Not, not too bright there. I can always go brighter, but well, I can always tone it down as well. So there's really no worries. It's a lot of fun. Got to enjoy. Oh, I like that. My brush accidentally had two colors on it. Oh, that's nice. I should do that on purpose. Do that on purpose. Double loading your brush. You sometimes do it for rocks, but could work really good for really good for just stuff. Keeping my brightest colors here in the middle. There it is again. Double loaded. Boom. Just like that. So now I've got just a little bit of yellow and green here. You can see I just stopped to squirt out a little more color. And I think that's probably just something we have to continue to do. No, no big deal, really. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get some amount of light kind of shining down on here on this grass area. It does not need to be anything super precise. Actually, a little flip up would be would be good. Just like any painting, you know, any acrylic style painting, you just use your finger to soften your hard edges because you don't want those. I do like the idea of this grass flipped up here. Maybe a little, you know, kind of go different directions with it, but <laughs> you get that nice kind of soft edge. It's cool. Looks like grass growing right there against that darkness. I like that. I think that's interesting. Yeah, works. Okay, maybe as we go down, let's go ahead. With well, I shouldn't leave that hard line, but I'm going to leave it. I don't think it really makes a whole lot of difference today. Let's just work on that section, just painting it in pretty randomly, just dabbling on your color. Okay, oils, this is, tends to be actually a little easier. It's a little harder in acrylics because you don't get the natural blend. So you have to go back in and actually manually blend it, which is completely fine. It works. I'm going to go with something a little more shiny. There we go. But see, just come in here and, and give yourself a nice blend into mid-tone. We set ourselves up for success by kind of already having some of this built in. But there you go. Just using kind of the side of the brush to scrub it in. Doesn't have to be perfect. A little bit here and there. Good. We will add an accent highlight on this either now or, or later. Or now and later. <laughs> We'll see. Nice. As you work down, colors should be getting darker. A little more muted. Maybe here. Well, but that's of course not not something you need to stick to permanently. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, a little darker down here, but you can still have some hits of highlight and maybe turn this into a little taller blades of grass here. Anything you want to do because we're just layering at this point. Just layering. Uh, I do want this bush here to be made into something a little more interesting. So maybe we'll work on that as well while we're, while we're going here. Now that we kind of have the lighting established, this is so much uh, easier to work with. Now that you know what direction your light's coming, where your light should be, how bright it should be, all of that good stuff. And just work this on slowly. Doesn't have to be any kind of a rush. <laughs> It's a, an interesting little bush. So this is wet right here. This fern or plant tree, well, tree thing. I don't know. Bush. Bush. That's what it is. Yes. It's wet. Anyways, I think that would be now is like the perfect time to get in here and add these red plants in. They're just going to add some variety to this painting, which I think it really could use. Is in terms of color, I don't know if this is even real. Would you see something? Yeah, you probably would. Tropical. I would imagine you would see something like this. This is not supposed to represent anything accurately. This is just color for the sake of the painting. Uh, and it looks to me kind of about what I wanted. Let me sneak a little color up in here as well. There. If anybody asks, tell them it's fall. <laughs> And my and my little plant here is losing its leaves. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you gotta have fun. Gotta have fun when you paint. This is just color for the sake of color down there as well. 
and I'm going to go up here and I do want the same color for the sake of color up here as well. Look here at the camera. Yep, you can see that. I got to turn around and look because you can't see the whole painting. So I got to make sure that I've got it where I want it. There, just some hits of color, not too many, where it'll be distracting. And we've still got to get in here. And I have, I have still got to get in here and paint in my darks. I haven't done that yet. Just a feeling of a little red splashed up in here is going to be a good thing. Ooh, too much. Kind of abstract, but that's okay. All right, do I like that? I think so. I think we do. Mm, yeah, I was gonna put something over there, but maybe not. Okay, let's go ahead and get in here with my black. Just going black right into that brush. And I'm just going to use it to darken the forest back here. Forest floor area. Super dark, high contrast. Maybe a little more, a little water foundation medium, whatever you wanna use. Oh man, I lost my grass line. Oh well. I put it right back in, no problem. It's just a matter of kind of getting it all straightened out, get everything the way you like it. And then we're gonna slow down very quickly here. And <laughs> slow down very quickly. Yeah, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna slow down and we're going to paint in our details, which I'm very much looking forward to. It's more of this darkness here, just to represent other plants. Thinning this paint down, almost liner brush consistency is going to be your friend when you paint uh, something like this, I think. At least it's been helping me. More, more grass, more interest. You see, I put a little color here in the path. Nice. Is it perfect? No. Does it look terribly sloppy? Oh yeah but I'm okay with that because I kind of have a, something in mind. <laughs> we're, we're getting there eventually, slowly but surely. There. That looks good. Just overlapping strokes just to break this area up, soften it a little, and just overlap things. You, you know, you wouldn't see just, uh, just everything. You want it to be very much overlapped like this, you know, with different ones in shadow and highlight, whatnot gonna make things look more natural just literally just scrubbing like this just soften it good big difference look at the difference that looks more uh more real more, more organic more realistic you can see the whole thing <laughs> now i'm down here on my knees but that's okay it's more comfortable i went ahead and moved this is what you're seeing right now it's actually the office that's where we are it's my computer's just behind me there we go i'm gonna create a very large leafy kind of jungle plant, which I think is kind of interesting. Very good. We'll just do, yeah, we'll just do these nice big details. This is all dry and it has been for quite a while. Let me get my Mr. Bottle. I'm gonna keep my paints wet. I did start with another clean sheet here. Just was about time. Sometimes it's easier just to, to <laughs> get rid of your old paper palette and, and get out the next one. And that's one of the advantages of paper palettes. They're so easy to deal with. You don't even have to clean them. I recommend paper palettes for people who are just starting out. And I think I said, no, I know I said it in my beginner video. So if you haven't seen that video, you should definitely go check it out. It kind of, it's just information. It's just information about, you know, if you're just starting out, if you have kind of just simpler questions about starting, you know, it's nothing too crazy, but just hopefully answers some good questions. So this acrylic part is completely dry and it's been dry for probably about an hour actually, took a break. So I'm gonna, I've got just this foundation medium there and I've got a very clean flat blender brush. I washed it out very, very well. And I'm gonna go ahead and just coat the entire canvas now with this foundation medium. The point of this, I mean, you don't have to, it looks like you're gonna ruin it, but you're not gonna ruin anything. It dries completely clear. You don't have to do this. This is completely optional, but it, it, because I'm about to paint oils, it gives me kind of an extra layer of protection is really what it's doing. It's almost like varnishing the painting. And it allows me to not have to 
worry about my underpainting here. I don't want to be painting with my oils with the thought in the back of my mind, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to grind too hard and go right through that paint that maybe is not fully cured yet, you know? So let's just <laughs> take this extra five minutes and coat the entire canvas with that foundation medium and we won't have to worry about it. Now we want to let that foundation medium dry for probably 20 minutes or you could just hit it with a hair dryer. But there you go. Again, this will dry completely clear. So now I'm changing to oil paint. That's clear gel right here. Of course, just blue and white. And that's all I need for this step. So that's all I put out. And I've got a I've got a nice one inch brush ready to go. You can do this with several different kinds of brushes. Doesn't really doesn't really matter too much. All right. Now I've got it thinned down with the clear gel. That's kind of the important part here. You could certainly use something like linseed oil, but don't use too much. It might go bad, <laughs> it might go too slick. But anyway, this is fully dry, fully, fully dry. It's got a very nice glossy appearance to it. And this is all because of that foundation medium we, we used to kind of seal it up or just protect it a little better. So here we go. Uh, I want my, let's see, I think I want my sunlight. Well, I want it all up and through this area actually. But we got to start somewhere. Got to start somewhere. Hey, this is oil paint. This is actually not. It's not really a scary thing to be doing something like this. Look, I mean, yeah, it's scary for five seconds, but you know, it's oil paint. So we can just simply. Well, number one, we have all day to work. And number two, we can simply take a shop towel and wipe it off. You've seen <laughs> you've seen us do that before. All right, let's see. A little more paint, a little more blue. I like that blue. There we go. So we got the advantages of the acrylics where it dries really quick, get all the detail. And now we have the advantages of the oil where it's easy to blend. No stress, no stress blending <laughs> there. I'm going to go with about 50% probably of that clear gel to start with. We'll see how that works. Make sure this is all covered. All right. Now, before I go too far with this, let me let me grab a shop towel, just a regular blue shop towel. I'm actually pretty well set up down here. We'll fold it up nicely. I think that's actually important. You kind of want that smooth edge. You don't want too many crumples in it. And we'll start here. Hold on to my painting so it doesn't go flying. And we'll just make this look like we really spent a long time blending. So something else here I'd love to try is rather than using the shop towel, I'm going to try using a blender brush. Typically, you know, in my mind, but now remember, I don't do this a lot. I don't usually paint wet over dry. So I'm kind of feeling this out. But typically, I would imagine, well, you we don't need the blender brush because there's nothing to blend into. But I think it's going to actually spread the paint smoother than the shop towels do. I'm used to the shop towels on wet surfaces. They work great. But I actually think, <laughs> I think it took, all, took away a little too much, if you, if you know what I mean. At least for my taste, it'd be interesting to see what you think. I can't wait to see your version. Don't uh, don't bother doing it on a silly size. You do it on any size that's convenient. Uh, let me just say this size is not convenient if you're looking for a convenient size. There, wait, look, you know, I'm used to thinking as well. I'm used to thinking, oh, you can't go too far down. I don't want to touch any of this, you know, but that's dry. I can go right over the bush if I want to. I think I want to. Why? Why not? Sun rays get bigger as they come down I, to me. I I just think this makes the painting. I think the destruction of the background, just making it all blurry and misty is what makes this painting interesting. Um, all right, well, we could certainly do a lot more, but let's wait and see. Let's just blend this, which is what I want to show you right now. I've got a very clean, actually brand new <laughs> blender brush. All right. Oh yeah, that's that's exactly what I was thinking it would do after I used that shop towel. I didn't think it would be very good until I used it and realized used the shop towel and realized that ah, it's just not it's taking off way too much. So this is perfect. It's just feathering it evenly across that surface. I think it's actually grinding it into the, the actual tooth of the canvas. Maybe if you had a smooth board, uh, something like the shop towel may work better. Oops, brand new brush <laughs> means we're going to be shedding just a little. There we go. You want to be this is something we never talk about is brush care, but you want to be really careful to take care of your blender brush. Don't scrub with it. And when you clean it, you know, be very gentle with it. It doesn't take much to to really 
hurt these soft, delicate bristles. You want to keep them soft and delicate as long as possible. But brushes do wear out, but it's good to keep them, you know, as long as possible. Saves a lot of money. So now I've squirted out just a little yellow and I've got my white and my blue. It's enough, I think, to get us through a little bit. I do have my sap green here at my feet. I just didn't squirt it out. That's all right. <laughs> we can always, always get it out if we need it. I've got my little, my little flat quarter brush. I think it's going to be pretty decent. You could go with filbert or a fan or anything else. Actually, a fan brush might be really nice. There's not really much to work with, though, here. We're not really like going crazy painting with a bunch of texture with oils. This is more just we did the oils because I wanted to do the sun rays. And I wanted to have a lot of control. Good thing, because those sun rays probably took me 20 minutes. You know, could you do it in acrylic? Absolutely. I think it would be a lot more challenging and less forgiving. And I wasn't for sure what I wanted. And so I was able to experiment around. And as you saw, I kind of scrape things well, scrape, rub things away, you know, change things around as I needed. So I had a much better experience that way. So it's just, you know, using the tools that we have to really just make the effect we want. Same idea here. I'm just going to accent highlight with my oils. You certainly don't have to do this. You could have done it with the acrylics only. But since they're out, I figure, why not? Why not just accent highlight with the oils? Kind of give it a kind of give it a nice effect, I think. A little more thick, globby effect, actually. I think right here would be worthwhile just placing on a little bit more highlight to this tree trunk. Keep it soft and pale, and nobody will ever notice that the sun rays don't go over. It will look like the sun rays do go over as long as it's, again, soft and pale. There you go. Love it. All right, I think we're finished with this crazy painting. It's been a lot of fun. It certainly has been different. Definitely don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brush Line. Thanks for watching.